welcome to another episode of Dr. Me First. Yep, we're doing it again. Another solo cast. Excited to share with you a little bit of storytelling, a little bit of teaching, a little bit of rant today, but a whole bunch of fun and goodness. So we'll jump into the solo cast, but before I do, I got to pay some bills. Let me tell you about Contract Diagnostic. It's a firm 100% dedicated to physician contract reviews. They provide a service that all physician families will need at least once in their career. Probably more. (laughs) Doctors Podcast Network loves this company as they have helped over 10,000 doctors understand not only what they're signing, but the risks that they're taking for their families. All contracts are reviewed by an in-house attorney and presented in a simplified way for you. They use custom documentation, compensation data, and times outside of normal business hours to make it easy for you. Don't need a contract reviewed right now? Well, they can even just have a consult with you to see about the fairness of your current compensation structure or your upcoming contract renewal. All packages are flat priced, so you know what you get up front, and residents and fellows can even make interest-free payments over time. So look them up in the show notes. They're at drpodcastnetwork.com backslash contract diagnostics, or give them a call at 888-574-5526. All right, let's get into today's solo cast. All right, how to quit your job almost guilt-free. I had to slip the almost in there because when I was titling it, how to quit your job guilt-free, I was like, that's like saying always and never. (laughs) You can't do that. So I slipped a little bit of almost in there. And I think it's really important. So if you're listening to the podcast, maybe you're considering a transition. Maybe you're thinking about trying something else, maybe a side hustle, Maybe you're to the point where you're like, I hate being a doctor. I wish I had cancer or got hit by a truck or got COVID so that you didn't have to go back into the office. So wherever you fall into the spectrum here, I want to make sure that I'm empowering you and all listeners to know that you can transition through whatever your journey is in the best way possible. That it doesn't have to feel slimy or gross or like you're hiding, that transitions can actually be a super lovely thing. Now, are they easy? No, but you can do hard things and you have done hard things in the past. So I'm not going to say quit your job super easy. It's quit your job almost guilt free because I think it's really important to know that there is a system for which you can do this and come out on the other side and not feel like, oh my God, I made the worst fucking mistake ever. And also too, for people who are listening and maybe you're in a good place, maybe you don't want to quit your job. These are still really good tips so that if you're helping somebody else navigate it or we're all going through transitions in some way in our life. So instead of quit your job, you could put in quit that committee that you don't want to serve on guilt-free or Like I said, you can insert anything into this using kind of these steps that I've I've picked up because I want people to stop doing 1 a.m. LinkedIn searches, desperately trying to find something so that they can turn in their notice at work. And it's like, oh, it's because I found a different position. No, that's not healing. That's not helping you. That's not getting you to a better place because you're just trading tit for tat. So go with me on this. See if this maybe helps because I don't want you to be desperate. I don't want you to be hiding. I don't want you to be wasting any more mental brain power on a transition that can go beautifully. So, okay, step number one on how to quit your job with almost no guilt is one, address the guilt (laughs) that you're feeling right now. Dr. Robin Allie Hay, she came on the podcast, uh, It's been about 20 episodes ago, but I love the quote that she gave me that she said, guilt is an unfunctional emotion for me. And I was like, ooh, tell me more about this. And she said, well, I think some people can argue that it's a functional emotion and that it maybe has purpose. But for me, it's a non-functional or even dysfunctional emotion because instead of saying I did something bad or wrong, 
she goes to I am bad or wrong. And I actually want to address that. Like that goes from guilt, which let me pull up the definition here. Feeling responsible or regretful for a perceived offense, real or imaginary can be part of the grief reaction. So that's the definition that Google gave me. Oh, here's another one. The fact of having committed a specific or implied offense or crime. Wrongdoing. Culprit. Wrong. So that's the true definitions of guilt versus shame, which is I am a bad person. I hurt everyone. It's like claiming that identity part of it. And so for that and addressing the guilt, I think it's really sitting with it and asking some questions. I know as I have gone through different transitions, guilt has always been a big monster emotion that has shown up in my life. But when I've actually sat with it and journaled about it or worked through it with a coach or a friend, these questions that I'm about to give you have been really, really helpful. So the first one is, hey, guilt, what are you trying to teach me right now? Because I imagine there's probably some kind of lesson here. Otherwise, you wouldn't be so big and scary. The next question, and you can jot these down as you're thinking about guilt, is who is this guilt serving? Is this something that is helping me? Or is this an external force, pressure, being pressed upon me? Like being made to feel guilty, either by somebody real or maybe a past experience that's like coming back up to haunt you. What good is coming from holding on to this guilt? That one's always an insightful question for me because I'm like, is there any good coming from this guilt? Next question, and I love this one, is what is the guilt protecting you from? That one's a tricky one because our brain wants to offer us guilt, the emotion and feeling of guilt sometimes because it fears change. So maybe it's protecting us from fear or from the potential of harm or from change. So the question again is, what is the guilt protecting you from? And then after you've sat with the guilt and see like, is it guilt or is it shame? Because again, shame is the I am, the identifier, where guilt is I did. These questions I want to ask you to see if you can move past the guilt or see if there's another emotion under the guilt for which you'd rather have. So what emotion would you rather have in this situation? And what would that look like? I think those are pretty awesome questions to have. And the other thing I like to use too is statements like even though. Even though I didn't handle the situation the best, I am a good person. Even though I signed a contract and promised to work at this place for 10 years, I am a good doctor. Even though I will insert whatever, remind yourself that this is just a circumstance. This is just a situation. This is just something that's happening in life and does not mean a critically like flawed error in you. Like, you're just mortal. You're just human, like the rest of us. And honestly, sometimes things just don't work out. So when it comes to quitting, I want you to really address the guilt. That's the first big and huge step. And that's why I have it as number one, because if you can sit with this and you can describe this and you can talk through this, the next four steps are going to be super easy. Okay, step number two is get really clear on your intentions and how you want to show up. And what I mean by that is as you're going to quit your job, as you're going to quit anything or change a situation, I really want you to think about like, what is your intentions with that? Is this like you're going to go in there, middle fingers blaring and like throw down your resignation letter and be like, burn, Or do you want to show up and be like, hey, I'm going to finish out my days. I'm going to do my best work that I've been doing. I appreciate the opportunity and move on. I would say most likely it's probably the second. (laughs) But I want you to get super clear on how you want to show up in the situation because then that's going to frame how you're going to have conversations and how you're going to set everything up as you're working towards making this transition. Step number three is I want you to come up with a short-term plan, a transition plan, and start imagining a long-term goal. And what I mean by that, so 
short term plan is like from now and the next 90 or 120 days. What are you going to do between them? Because as physicians, a lot of times we've got to give, you know, that must notice sometimes even more like 180 days. So you need to have a short term plan on who do you need to talk to? What actually needs to happen? You know, how does the office start to like roll down? Are they onboarding a new person? Make a short term plan for yourself. How are you going to talk to your patients? How are you going to tell your staff? That sort of thing. And then your transition plan is from now over the next nine months. And that's saying, like, are you going to try to have a position, next position already in line? Are you thinking about a bridge job? Are you taking a break or sabbatical for a while? So that's the transition plan. And then the long-term goal is like, where do you want to see yourself in two years? Where do you want to see yourself in five years? Where do you want to see yourself in 10 years from now? And you don't have to be super, super clear about it. And actually, I walk you through this in the Dr. Me First workbook. So if you want more help on not going into details, because I could probably do like five podcast episodes on this. But it's really important to kind of start setting out short term plan, transitional plan, and then your long term goals. Okay, number four, you have to understand the details so that you can do the thing and the technical HR stuff. So this is when. You need to get out your contract or your employment agreement. You need to go through those details. You need to think about, okay, if I quit on such and such date, will I still be eligible for bonuses, for insurance? Kind of those technical details. Step number four is where it's really good to have a coach or professional who is familiar in this area that can walk you through this. Maybe having an attorney understand if you're going to break your contract and you need some legal advice as far as, you know, You can negotiate out of a non-compete. So how do you go about doing that? And what kind of letters do we need to write? Is there a division of assets that you need to take care of? So number four is kind of the technical details and make sure that you have to review review this. You can't just like go in, I'm going to quit, and then we'll just figure it out when the dust settles. No, you need to have this done ahead of time. Because again, remember, I'm teaching you how to quit your job almost guilt-free. And part of that is knowing those details and which leads me to step five, which is have support all along the way. And I'm not just saying like professional support. You're also going to need personal support. A lot of times when people are making transitions, they want to self-isolate. Like they almost don't want to talk to friends or to colleagues that they've been close with. Because again, all those emotions of like shame and guilt bubble up like, oh my God, I'm doing something wrong here. And instead, if you look at it as like, I'm doing a transition here, It's super important to have those people around you that can help and support you. This is going to be a stressful time. This is going to bring up a lot of things. And this is a time when more than ever, you are going to need those support people around you. So what I want you to do for step five is get a post-it note and write down your support people, be that family, friends, other colleagues, a coach, other professionals, a therapist, clergy, whatever it is, I want you to write down those people because these are the people that you're going to need to have as you talk through. So let me give you those five steps again. One, address the guilt, ask those questions and see, is this really guilt or is this shame that I'm feeling? Two, get really clear on your intentions and how you want to show up in this process. Three, make your plans, short-term, transitional, and long-term. Four, get the details and all the technical with the HR contract. And then also you've got to like do the thing, the actual resignation at some point. I forgot to add that in. And then number five is have support all along the way. If you do these things, you will be able to quit your job, quit a committee, make a transition, almost guilt-free. And I say almost because you're not abnormal if you have a little bit of guilt that pops up. It may be Part of what I tell people is kind of like the grieving process. Like you kind of have to go through this, this kind of the death of you in this position in this job. And so it's absolutely normal to be feeling this type of things. It's a problem when it becomes excessive, all consuming and interfering with your thoughts and how you're living your life. Okay. If you want more guidance, if you want more great tips, if you want some Aaron Wiseman sass as you are going through this, then you need to get into the Burnt Out to Badass group. 
just telling you, it's stuff we talk about. If you're not up for group participation, then there's always the Burnt Out to Badass CME self-pace that you can go through on your own or the Dr. Me First workbook. Guys, I have so many resources to help you out. Do not navigate this by yourself because there's no reason for you to feel alone, to feel like you're broken and that this is going to be your forever reality and it's going to be nearly impossible to change your life. Because actually it's not. It's just a few simple things that you've got to do, but the only thing that's stopping you is you. So working on yourself is uber, uber important. Hey, are you tired of going at it alone? Well, friend, you don't have to anymore. Come sit with me. I want you to know that it's okay if you need to take a break. It's okay if you need to talk about some real crappy things. It's okay. You're not the first to feel like this, and you don't have to stick it out and be miserable. There is a way out, and there is a whole movement of fierce females in your corner. If you want to come sit with me and be in my community, you will not see me in Facebook groups. I freaking hate Facebook with a deep and fiery passion. (laughs) But what you can do is come over to Aaron Wiseman's Badass Collective on Slack. Because guess what? Once a badass, always a badass. And this isn't anything that's paid. It's not anything that I'm like throwing huge promos at you. It is simply a community where I am trying to get people together in the same space so that we can have these kind of conversations safely and in a protected manner that you feel so loved on. It's the whole purpose. So click in the show notes, get over to the Slack group. We do have some community rules. But, you know, that's just how it goes. But I would love to see you in there. I am in there almost every single day having real conversations, posting crazy pictures of my kids and gifts, all that good stuff. And I want you in there, too. So come on over. Come sit with me. All right, there we go for today's solo cast. Before we end this up, remember that this podcast episode today is sponsored by Contract Diagnostic. It's kind of significant. (laughs) And I talk about quitting and I'm like, oh, by the way, here's somebody who can review your contracts. I personally don't know them, but the Dr. Podcast Network does recommend them as a company that specializes in contract reviews because specialization is something we can all appreciate here. So again, if you or your family need contract needs, give them a call. You can see them in the show notes at drpodcastnetwork.com backslash contract diagnostics. Give them a call at 888-574-5526. Oh, and one last thing before I let you go here. If you are considering a job transition, changing or quitting, I want to give you the confidence in your ability to make this happen and to believe in yourself and that you're good enough to start dreaming again because you're not crazy and it's not too late to make changes. You haven't wasted your life or your time and that it doesn't matter what you do going forward, your skills and experience will never be taken away from what you've already done. So I want you to lean into these feelings about thinking about transitions, going through those five steps that we talked about today, and keep in touch. Let me know how you're doing and how I can help you because I am here and I 100% want to back you up. Remember, your life, your calling, your pulse matters.